I'm Shimomo Mangazi with Business Time on Times. It is a magazine program where we bring you business and economic news stories making headlines. In the program today, tobacco prices jump 8.3% in two weeks. Also in the program, two Malawi Stock Exchange listed real estate management firms register a combined 18 billion kwacha profit. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned. Tell me, where is all the good wine? You mean you do not have any French wine? Like uh, some Pinot Noir? In my country, we have so much. Well, you're in Malawi now. Maybe you should try something different. Just try it. Très bien. I really love this. Made from fresh local fruits of mulberry, jambula, rosella, strawberry, plum, white guava and white peach and naturally fermented for one or two years in our cool cellar comes Malawi's own Linga. Here's to a smooth taste, unsurpassed quality and distinctive fruit wines. When in Malawi, it has to be Linga. Hello and welcome. Figures from Auction Holdings Group have shown that prices being offered on the tobacco market this year are a bit higher compared to last year. This has been witnessed by an average price of $1.68 recorded in the first two weeks of sales from $1.55 last year. This represents an 8.3% change in the prices. We have more in this report. Malawi has realized 15.1 million US dollars from the sale of 8.9 million kilograms of tobacco in the first two weeks of sales. This represents a 69.6% increase when compared to the 8.9 million US dollars the country realized during the same period last year after selling 5.6 million kilograms of the crop. Tobacco Commission Chief Executive Officer Joseph Chidanto Malunga says worrisome are rejection rate trends which have remained higher than last year. Two weeks, uh, uh, you know, fairly good because he, um, compared to the same period uh, last season, I think the prices and the volumes that we have sold are much better than the, um, last year. For example, um, we have sold nearly um, 9 million kilograms of uh, uh, tobacco, uh, while last year, the same period, we had sold about 6 million. And this year we have realized already 15 million uh, US dollars, um, while last year uh, it was a little lower, about 9 million. So even in, term of, in terms of uh, the prices, the average price this year is about 1.68, while last year, same period was 1.56. So I think the market is progressing well, and um, we hope it will continue like this. Even though there are problems, um, rejection rates and things like that, but bear in mind that the, uh, we are talking about three markets only because the, the fourth market, which is Zuzu, we have not opened yet due to weather situation. So the three markets are giving us uh, better in terms of everything. Uh, volume is better, uh, the average price is better, and even the money that we've realized is also better than last year. I think it's the issue to, to do with the, the rules of supply and demand. As you know that we announced earlier in the season that this year um, we anticipate that we're going to have lower volumes uh, than what the uh, buyers are looking for out there. So I think uh, uh, that could be one of the reasons. And the other reason is that we have also seen good quality tobacco on the market. Uh, Limbe market in particular uh, unexpectedly, they have offered very nice quality. So, um, as you know, the prices also go with the quality that you are displaying. So, the issues of quality are good, and uh, also that the volume out there is smaller than what the buyers are looking for. So, probably those are some of the reasons. High rejection, um, we, you have to realize that the, we are at the beginning of the market season, first week, second week, and normally the growers they don't bring their best crop uh, at, at, at this time. So 
they wait, uh, you know, way into the season and then bring um, their best crop. But it is also an issue to do with grading. Um, sometimes when a buyer rejects, um, basically is saying, can you regrade this? Because the, if you have a bad grade, you make sure that you put all the bad grade in one bell. A good grade, uh, the same thing. But if you mix bad and good, it, it, it is not good at all. So um, those are some of the things that we are telling our growers um, that the, you know when they're selling, they have to make sure that the, um, they put one grade in, in one bell and then the other grade. But it's a continu continuous education. Um, we are continuously uh, telling our growers what to do. And uh, like I said, um, probably sometime way into the market, things will improve. See how much you are going to get, but the, we know that the, our projection is we're going to have around 124 million kilograms of tobacco. And uh, looking at the average price, I, I don't know uh, how much we're going to get, but um, let's see what happens. Otherwise, we are expecting to sell um, more than 120 million kilograms. So if the average remains the same, then probably we'll realize uh, the product of the average price and the, the, the volume that I'm talking about. Well, this year is a little higher in terms of rejection than what it was um, last year. Like I said earlier, that there are so many things that are to do that. One of the things is also that the uh, some of the buyers that registered to buy this day have not started buying yet. And most of those are the ones that buy on auction. So our traditional buyers, most of them do not buy on auction. Uh, the ones that you know emerge during the season are the ones that they come and buy on, on auction. So uh, most of them have not started yet. Um, we're still engaging them in terms of uh, finding out the reasons why they're not on the market yet. So like I said earlier, as we go, as we progress uh, inside the market season, uh, most of these things will improve. President of the Tobago Association of Malawi Tama Trust, Abiyo Kalimabanda, expects farmers to earn more from the crop than last year. Uh, looking at uh, the prices offered on contract, uh, the farmers uh, think they may have just a little bit higher than last year's market season. Tobacco remains Malawi's major export crop. However, its production has been on the decline in recent years, resulting in reduced earnings from the crop. Last year, the country sold 112.89 million kilograms of tobacco, realizing 173.5 million US dollars from the green gold. The earnings were 27% below 237 million US dollars realized during the 2019 season. Staying with the tobacco theme, the Agriculture Research and Extension Trust, ARID, has raised four new duck-fired tobacco varieties that are high-yielding and disease-tolerant. The varieties are expected to be available on the market from this month. ARID Chief Executive Officer Albert Changaya explains more. From Arad this year, uh, apart from the normal uh, belly varieties, where we have ABH 12, ABH 31, and ABH 43, we have released new dark fire hybrid varieties. There are actually four of them. These are very high yielding and resistant to soil bone and Fourier diseases. And actually the demonstrations that we had this year or the research trials that we had were actually showing a big difference between these hybrids and the uh, varieties that we released before. Because most of the old varieties, they went down to uh, Fusaria Muot and also Tonaria Brown Spot, but these ones were very, very resistant and they were standing out. So we would encourage the farmers to actually use these uh, new uh, hybrid varieties for dark fired. And uh, apart from that, of course, we have the normal flu cured varieties uh, like the AFH 1, 2, 3, 4. But we released new ones, AFH 5 and 6. These, for the farmers who do not have maybe enough curing space, they give a breather because they don't ripen so fast. They are quite uh, good and the quality is very good. So the farmers would enjoy you know, harvesting at their own pace and they are using them. The, the estimated yields are ranging from about uh, 2.5 tons and above, which, which are quite, quite high. And the, uh, some of them are even going to 2.7 or even 3 tons uh, per, per hectare. 
So being hybrids, it means they are very, very high yielding and we are actually proud of them. And we would encourage farmers to use these you know, varieties uh, for this season. But maybe uh, as, a, as an advantage while uh, describing the varieties, I just want to warn farmers that uh, when it comes to time of selling uh, tobacco seed, there are a lot of dubious characters who bring in fake seed. Uh, from from uh, I don't know where uh, on the market they flood the market, but I just want to uh, ask the farmers to guard against buying fake seed. They should make sure that either farmers are getting seed from Aret, they are buying from Aret, or they are being given by uh, contracted farm, uh, uh, buyers. That that would be the, that's the way they, they would do because one we don't want to have recycled seed on the market and I think uh, this message should come strong to the farmers that any we have seen in the floors here uh, that any tobacco coming from Chizewe or uh, you know recycled seed is being rejected so they have to guard against that so we have the certified seed and we have the right varieties for them to make profit. The real estate industry seemed to have had a good year in 2020 owing to huge profits companies in the sector have posted. For example, Malawi Stock Exchange listed Mpiko and Icon Properties have registered a combined 18 billion kwacha profit in the year. Justin Quell has more in this report. According to financial statements from the companies, Mpiko has posted a profit after tax of 9.2 billion kwacha and 8.8 .8 billion kwacha for Icon Properties. Mpiko attributes its profit to a one-off deferred tax adjustment of 2.5 billion kwacha following the recognition of the corresponding asset. Its trading statement adds that the adjustment was prudently determined that based on the current taxable profits projection in one of the subsidiaries in the group, the utilization of the tax asset would not materialize before the relevant statutory period expires. The company also saw total assets increasing from 73.8 billion kwacha in 2019 to 79.7 .7 billion kwacha in 2020. Mpiko admits that COVID affected the economy and the sector was not spared but hopes for a better year in 2021. It says COVID effects will continue in view of the reported resurgence in other parts of the world. The statement adds that there are, however, signs of the situation improving, adding the group has adaptive strategic plans to ensure its stakeholders are provided with relevant property solutions and that shareholders' investment is protected. Icon Properties saw its total assets increasing to 86.3 billion kwacha in 2020 from 79.3 billion kwacha in 2019. Its trading statement says the group's performance was driven by property revaluation gains and finance income as rental income reduced compared to the previous year. It adds that COVID affected its performance as to protect cash flows, several maintenance projects were postponed until further notice, whereby capital projects faced several delays. The fourth quarter of the year saw improvement in the pandemic and affected conditions which allowed the group to close with a stronger position. On Outlook, Icon Properties says the improvement in business activities over the festive season was summarily hearted at the beginning of the 2021 year, mainly due to the spike in COVID-19 positive cases. Although the number of reported COVID-19 cases has reduced significantly, following various government measures, Malawi's economic outlook still faces considerable downsize risks, including weather shocks and pressure on the Malawi kwacha. It concludes that the pandemic is expected to continue having an impact on the portfolio and that although Icon is expected to remain competitive, rental growth is expected to continue to be impacted with the retail sector expected to face challenges during the recovery. The COVID pandemic shook different sectors of the economy with transportation, tourism and entertainment being the heaviest hit. Being this is Business Time, a magazine program where we bring you business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. We'll be right back. Sugar, <laughs> 
Ino mupaske dani yonse yango za zandi made in Malawi yoka yoka. Tama kani moyo to gula bogula zinto za kuncha. Magani zame na urundo bwe zidaji to kujaza ziko ni nombo yo. Kugula zinto zopangi na watu kongo no uma tandi za uwe zanchiro zama kampu panani ziko muno. Zoma sodo zima pelega moyo wanchiro kwa ndo amiri. Ogwira nchiro akajuruga ziko la tu soli madole ya tu misungu yajuruga. Chuma sodo chuma kuera. Mungo gula bogula urundo wa kuncha. Uma angole mene tama yuko wa kuncha o ifesi di bindura gantu. Kani? Duguza ni yuko bunde ndamvetsa tu. Hey. Nandi gile nandi gile bomba. Nane ndika kugula zinto zato zato zaji malawi. Welcome back. In recent months, financial institutions, especially commercial banks, have come under heavy criticism for huge profits they posted in 2020. Critics say the development portrays how the institutions did not caution customers during the COVID pandemic. But similar trends have been seen among microfinance institutions and savings and credit cooperatives alike. But what was the secret to such huge profits? Steve Chilongo is president for Umozi Sako. We are equally surprised and we thank God because we feel God has been a driving force. Our members have been patronizing uh, the institution. Much as the liquidity was a problem to most circles, liquidity was not a problem to Umozi Sako. And maybe the asset that we use most is the group loans. We are a payroll-based institution where once one gets a loan, it is deducted on the payroll. But we have this group loan as one which ensures that we have liquidity all through, simply because once the loans are collected by the treasurer of respective groups, they bring cash to the office. So the flow of business, the flow of uh, operations has been easy to us. The future is bright, so bright. I am optimistic that we will hit more than a billion. Last year, of course, we were, our assets were 810 million. And then this year, despite COVID, we have hit 1 billion 182 million. A clear indication that despite the hassles that we have gone through in the COVID era, despite, of course, the fact that we are also having the third wave, we are hopeful that we are going to excel. And then, God willing, next year we might hit two billion as in assets. In fact, we need to appreciate we have registered a profit which is huge. And then if we do not give out dividends to our members, then we are not appreciative. Remember, when you are doing business, a customer just needs a small token of appreciation. That is a driving force to uh, continuity in business. So they'll give us more business simply because they know we, are, we appreciate what they have done. And Ezekiel Tindwa is business development manager for the Malawi Union of Savings and Credit Cooperatives. It's quite indeed a challenging environment, uh, not only for circles, but the nations as well, and all businesses. It has tripled down even to individuals. However, I would like to say that uh, uh, some circles, they, they have taken COVID as an advantage because they have come up with the new products responding to the environment, but some circles have been heavily affected. But now let me take you back to Moz Sako. Moz Sako, having their AGM today, is all about good news. And good news indeed are uh, based on the facts. The facts is about the figures. The figures which have been presented by the auditor is quite encouraging. I'll start with uh, the growth in terms of asset base. The Sako has grown its asset base more than 70% from where they were last year. Surplus as well, more than that. 
uh, overall they have done quite well. The circle now is hitting a billion. It used to be around 800 plus, but today is 1.2 billion. It's a sign of growth. The surplus as well, they have managed even to control the expenses. And today, members are happy. They have posted a surplus of two, almost 240 million. That's quite encouraging despite the condition uh, we are going through the pandemic. As circles, we are one family. So we can always share the lessons learned, the strategies which other circles. We give a room to circles to visit Umoz and learn how Umoz have done. One of it is the growth on membership because the key denominator for the circle movement is membership. It's a game of numbers. Some circles are losing numbers, which is beyond our control indeed because of uh, the retrenchments in companies. But for Umoz, their focus is growth and they have grown. So there are a number of strategies which are to put in place. So we can encourage circles also to have the learning visits and learning strategies on the growth. Well, with that story, we've come to the end of today's edition of Business Time here on Times. It is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Chimuemu Mangazi. But always remember, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. Bye for now.